Hi, welcome to the second episode of Escaping 9 to 5. It's me again, your host, Diana. And this week's episode, it's with a great pleasure to sit down and talk to one of our good friends here in Thailand. Yuri had a privilege of living and working in five countries and three continents. Yuri first got into freelancing to make ends meet while he was at university, but only realized he was a digital nomad when he moved to Thailand in 2014. It took him time to discover his true passion. After studying IT, design, and marketing, He finally found himself at home in online marketing and has recently transitioned from being a freelancer to building his own digital marketing agency in Thailand. I hope his journey will inspire you to follow your passion, chase that dream, and finally have the courage to turn it into reality. Hi! Welcome to the second episode of Skipping 9 to 5. I'm your host, Diana, And this week's episode, I have a very special guest for you who is also one of our good friends here in Thailand. And yeah, hi, Yuri. Hello. H- how are you? Pretty good, thank you. What did you do today? I worked. Surprise, surprise. Were you in Hava? I was not. You were not in Hava. No, home You're office You're slacking. Today. No, no. <laughs> Okay, so this week's episode is all about you and your journey in this whole digital marketing space. And we would love to know more about you, what you do, and how did you find your job? Why are you in Thailand? Just explain to me what you do for a living, basically. Okay, sure. So by definition, I'm a part-time digital nomad and a almost full-time entrepreneur. So basically trying to transition from uh, being a, like a freelancer mm-hmm. and uh, to having a... Your own company. Digital agency, yeah. Wow. So could you please explain to me what does Bold Digital do? Yeah, sure. So as an agency, we're uh, helping startups and established companies sell more of their products and services for a greater profit, for more money pretty much. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do this by building a powerful business website for them mm-hmm. that can help them thrive in a competitive marketplace mm-hmm. then we uh, help them reach their ideal audience this could be either on facebook or on google other social media or other platforms mm-hmm. and then once we have those visitors we then convert them into leads or customers for them wow it's the whole thing in yes, one yes together it's a marketing system that uh, actually is composed of a couple of services so like i said there's a it's going to be a website some business marketing strategy uh online advertising design and photography and some content as well it's a whole package. Sort of is, but we're trying to like keep the uh, focus on uh, delivering what we say, like help them sell. So it's really a whole package and your unique selling point is, or unique selling proposition is you deliver results yeah. for more money. So we're really selling outcomes. We don't really we don't want to sell someone a website, but we're selling we're solving problem. If someone if a business if it can be an established business, they have a website, but you know there's no one going there. So what do you do? So then we can we can help them. We can uh, bring bring them more traffic, and then mm-hmm. we can do something with the traffic. You so we just do we do what it takes mm-hmm. to get the result. Do you set it up manually, or it's an automatic type of? Well, at the beginning, you have to set it up. Uh, but then uh, it can be, be on like an autopilot. Wow. So, so you don't you know, have to, you have to you build the website. There? You have to do the landing pages. You have to mm-hmm. create the campaigns. But then after a while, uh, it's going to require just maintenance. Wow. Thanks for explaining that to me. Sure. You're welcome. What's your preparation for your transition from being a freelancer to creating this or building this digital marketing agency, which is called Bold? Bold. <laughs> So I feel like um, lots of it is in in your head. Just exchange of you have to change your thinking, like do different mind settings, because the skills are pretty much the same. Like of course you have to do, you have to have lots of different hands. Like you have to know a little bit about accounting, you know the business stuff, sales and stuff like this. Mm-hmm. But as a freelancer, like you sh- you should know something about it as well. But if you if you want to do a company, mm-hmm. um, it's just a, a different mindset. 
like you have to think much bigger and because uh, you don't have to you're gonna have your team as well so you'll be thinking like beyond yourself you need to think broadly right yeah so i'm really curious about your background so you're from slovakia that's correct and you grew up there until what age until i was 18 years old and then so i finished high school graduated when i was 18 and uh, then i had to go well i chose to go to university so i went to czech republic which Same is as drew yeah yeah which is uh, the second largest city there uh, i'm sure drew knows uh Brno. Uh, so there I studied for three years, studied computers, mm-hmm. and after I was done, got my degree, I, w- I moved to the UK to stud- study master's degree. Where in UK? Leeds, in the north. In the north. For how yeah. many years? It was three years as well. Three years. Yeah, I did uh, actually two masters, but mm-hmm. a master's degree takes only one year in the UK. So I did the oh, first really? year I studied, the second year I had a gap year, I was working, trying to earn money for the second degree. <laughs> And yeah, the the last year I just uh, studied and that was the end of the chapter in the UK. Mm -hmm. And that that brings us here to Thailand. So from the transition of having your master's to being a freelance and basically being a digital nomad, what were you thinking? Because you have a degree and most people think that you are the best candidate for a manager's position why didn't you choose a nine-to-five job okay so the, there's a funny story behind this so while i was at university in the first year in leeds uh my parents only supported me so much and after a while pretty much just for the first year and i knew that after that one year i had to find a job because otherwise i would be just without <laughs> any money there so uh you're off the zipple yeah so i got a part-time job while i was studying uh, I'm just really lucky to have found this, which I, I'm still working with this company to this day, and it's just been enabling me to do like relocate to a different country afterwards. So uh, I got this job in my first year in Leeds, and I have kept it throughout even the the second degree, and I could just manage to do it just fine, and it was covering all my expenses and enabled me to be location independent. Mm-hmm. So when I when I moved to Thailand the first six months here, mm-hmm. I also just used that job. So what kind of job is it? Online marketing. And actually, it started as a link building. I started doing link building. What is a link building? It's a part of a SEO thingy. So when you... (laughs) um, So you're trying to build like a database of links that are leading to the client's site, which makes your uh, position, the the position of your website uh, higher or stronger in Google search results on search engines. Oh, okay. Like so it makes your website look more credible, more reputable. When you moved to the UK, you found an internship while you're working on your master's, right? Yeah. So up to this day, you're still working for the same company. Yeah. So a lot of people... It's like my only client, pretty much. It's your as, only as, as, a, as a nomad, yeah. Wow. You're a really trustworthy person. So they really had a huge trust amount in you and what you do. So a lot of people are asking on... How did you ask your boss to be a digital nomad? Or you're saying that, bye, I'm moving to Thailand. How did you ask him to be so I was really location lucky independent? Because this company was a growing company and had a really good family environment. Even when I was still in Leeds, I could just come into the office like whenever I wanted for stay however long I wanted. I, I wasn't really, I never had to just stay there. I could, I could do the work at home. So that, that was fine. So this led, or this meant that I can just relocate anywhere else in the world, and I can just do my work fine. So now uh, uh, that's working pretty good, I think. Mm-hmm. It's just like we have to just account for the time difference, which is like six, seven hours depending on the time of the year. So but that's about it. Do you have like a um, as a freelancer for the company? Do you have your own time, or do they? Do they like claw you with, oh, you got to work from nine to five, but you can work remotely. You can be no, in Thailand. There's no, there's no hours. You can just work whenever. If you do your stuff in a day, more it's power fine. to you. Yeah. As long as there is an output. Yeah. There, there is an outcome, expected outcome from you. Mm-hmm. And once that is done, you're, you're fine. Like you can do your hours whenever, however you like. So, Actually, link mm-hmm. building is just one of, one of the things that I started with, but 
uh, because it was such a small company. You can I could talk to the owner. It's like often make mm-hmm. tea for the owner, or t- the owner was making tea for me. Uh, so I I got some more gigs there. I was doing design as well, then taking care of some other uh, the, the same campaigns just in different language. Mm-hmm. And uh, then the company started working with translations. And because mm-hmm. at the time at the university I knew so many international people. I had good contacts, so I was able to find translators for for their job for for their another like big clients. Oh, that's why when you were asking me about translation about a Filipino yeah, or correct. Tagalog yeah, yeah. word. So now the company works with like sixty five different languages. So wow. I'm, I'm taking care of the translators in Southeast Asia. Oh, so you're in charge for the yeah. Southeast Asia region. Like, sort of like a project. Map. What are your challenges from working independently or working remotely? And your challenges now that you're transitioning to having your own company, like, would you drop your client or you're just, you're just going to do both? Yes, I'm fortunate enough that the the, uh, UK thing is really easy to do alongside just anything else that I do. Even when I had a full-time job here in Thailand for a little while, I was still able to maintain my, uh, this freelance thing on the side. Yeah, speaking of Thailand, why did you choose Thailand? There's a lot of options in Europe or in Asia to live as a digital nomad. But why Thailand? Why Bangkok? Okay, so this is absolutely unplanned. At the university, there were actually a lot of Asian people. I mean, before coming to the UK, I was never exposed to the Asian culture at all. Mm-hmm. I, like in Europe, you barely see any Asian people. I mean, in Slovakia, Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. But then just this whole international community was there. Like so many people from Thailand, from China, it's like so many Chinese. And yeah, then I discovered this part of the world as well. And I remember the last two years when I was in Leeds, I really wanted to go to Singapore. And so I I had my eyes on Singapore. Mm -hmm. But my last year at university, there were actually lots of Thai people in my class. So I thought it would be easier to come here after university because it's going to be cheaper. Mm-hmm. I can I at least know someone. So yeah. it's going to be easier for relocation. So I thought I would just stay here for a few months and a few months turned into four and a half years. Oh my God, I cannot imagine that you've been living here for four and a half years. How's your Thai language? It's okay, I can survive. Yeah, you can survive. Like You're our guide for getting taxis because you can get us anywhere with you basically jumping in a car and know how to speak the language. Yeah, it definitely helps you here. Yeah. Speaking of you relocating in Thailand, was it hard for you to get a job here in Thailand? Okay, so uh, like I said, the first six months I, I was here, I was still working as a freelancer, but there's a limitation in Thailand because you need visa and a work permit. Yes. So it really limits, limits your options. So if you want to do uh, something legit here. So I uh, actually applied for a job, mm-hmm. and I was the first time around. I was quite lucky to get a job. I think I landed in within two months or so. Wow! Yeah, I got a job as an online marketer in a law firm here. An online marketer, yeah, for a law firm. So trying to just promote. Was the, marketing um, your degree? Yes, it was my last degree. It was your last degree, so yeah. you really dived into the marketing world, and you know bits and pieces of it from what you studied. Did it discuss online marketing or you just studied by yourself? Now what I remember, like we had something, I th- yeah, maybe more like social media or just like small bits about digital marketing. But I remember when I started the job, I had to figure many things just by myself because I feel like the school just gave me some nice frameworks. But they were like when you're facing reality, it's a totally different, yes. different thing. Like I have to just almost start from the beginning. Get all the experience and all the knowledge and everything. Correct. Um, so you, when you were in Singapore, what was the when and what was the moment that you have told yourself that I'll be living in Asia? And after fast forward to now, you've been living here for four and a half years. What were you thinking before? You said Singapore. Did you mean Thailand? No, you were in Singapore before and then... I was not. I was just traveling there. Oh, you're just traveling there. Yeah, I, I just came to Thailand. Just to stay here. Yeah, I came here directly. And I remember like, the first couple of months, I, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to stay here. Because mm-hmm. it wasn't a laugh at the first sight for me. Mm-hmm. But then I thought about it uh, like in the long term. Mm-hmm. Like if I can see my future here or opportunities. And I just thought Thailand was going to be a better option. 
but actually to this day I still love Singapore. I always love going there. It's an amazing city. I love it. It's a nice escape from Thailand. Oh, Singapore is yeah, your yeah. escape. Yeah. Love How it. many times you've been in Singapore? Oh, I think like four or five, I think. <laughs> yeah. What do you love about Singapore? It's just a modern modern city, very, very close to Europe. So it reminds me a lot of like the Western world. Mm-hmm. So if I live here or when I live here for, for too long, I, I need to get a, go outside and get a, you know, Western fix. Just <laughs> I want to get uh, the Western culture around me just for a little while and see some of the things that I, I don't really see here. And it's really, it's fairly developed. I love the buildings there, the architecture and everything. Yeah. So like they're way ahead. It has a different charm than Bangkok. Bangkok has, has its own charm as well. So they're it's you're right a western needs this fit so this show talks about your passion how did you find your passion how to figure out that oh this is my niche so how did you figure out the passion that you have now for marketing and how did you turn it into um this business that you're building Uh so you did you Tell yourself that, oh, I'm really good at marketing. Let me try business. Let me try creating something for my own. How did you figure it all out? Okay. So I feel like my passion was in the making for a long time. Like I only realized what I really wanted to do, what I enjoyed doing in my mid-20s. Like before, I just had no idea. I was going from one thing to another. That explains Mm -hmm. why I studied three different things. Because for my bachelor's, I studied IT. Then I went to design and I went to uh, marketing, which really actually makes sense now because online marketing that combines all of these three different areas so really makes sense now it's like before i was just painting dots but now i can connect them finally so it was a long process yeah it took took me a while like i have to try different things see what works what doesn't work i feel like now this is something i actually enjoy doing what was the process of you finding that passion after it you did design design yeah so What did you tell yourself when you were studying design that, oh, this is not for me, I'll just finish it? No, actually, it was for me. Even before studying IT, I was doing web design Mm -hmm. as 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 one of my first jobs, like as a freelancer when I was like 16, 17. Wow. So you're really into freelancing when you were so little. Was it in your blood? No, (laughs) I think it was just mostly parents made made me do it in a way. It's like if I really wanted something, mm-hmm. they wouldn't just give it to me, but they they uh, told me like just figure it out. So I had to find a way to to get it get what I want. Are your parents supportive of what you're doing now? Yeah, I'm not sure if they fully understand exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Speaking of that, how do you explain to your parents what you're doing? Because they think that you're just having a vacation in Thailand for four years. So how do you explain to your parents like, mom, I really have a I, I really have a job. Come on, because they might tell you that you can go back to Slovakia and just get a real job or find a real job. Yeah, I get this question all the time, like if I'm going to get a job or <laughs> or if I'm going to come to back to Europe, like UK or Slovakia. But yeah. But, they, but they're always supportive of you. Yeah, of course. What are the challenges and sacrifices that you face being an entrepreneur in the making and how are you facing that? Okay, so as a freelancer or entrepreneur, like discipline, self-discipline, that's one of the things that you, have, you just mm-hmm. have to figure out because like, otherwise you'll be just sitting on your couch the whole day mm-hmm. just playing games or watching YouTube videos. So that's something, uh, it's probably an ongoing thing. I just always have to keep working on myself because otherwise I would just be a couch potato. <laughs> and then, so when you have a business, you actually have to think a lot more into the future. Like you, You're not going to get your instant gratification right away but you have to build some system first so you have to put in the work first and then you're gonna reap rewards so it's like it's a big uh, mind shift from when you're mm-hmm. when you're an employer you, you know you get your monthly salary yes but then suddenly you're on your own and just have to do it otherwise it's nothing coming in right because you're right it's a different mind shift because when you are working for someone you technically don't care about the business well yeah. you find people that cares about the business but only a few of them because basically it's not their own company. Why do they have to give a... Yeah, you just finish your job five, six o'clock and then, and then you just done. turn off. Yeah. yeah and it's <laughs> quite about your day, but you don't care about the work. It's fascinating to see you work in Haba during the day or sometimes you go there like 
in the afternoon or during lunchtime. And then after around lunchtime, you go to your home so that you switch it up. Not every day. It just depends on the work that I do. Because for mm-hmm. some activities, I find it really distracting to work there. So I um, I prefer to be at home when there is no where there are no distractions. But just for specific type of work only. It's like other things I can just do, they're fine. Mm-hmm. That's fine. And how do you stay productive? In general or at home? In general. Um, I'm a really big organization person. Yeah. So I have systems <laughs> for everything. <laughs> So I tried, to, I've got like a system for this week, like goals for this month. So I just try to keep myself accountable to that, like plan forward into the future and then try to just check the boxes and uh, actually make sure I hit the outcomes as well. Yeah, you, you taught me about the Airtable and now I'm using it and I'll never go back to other platforms that I was using before. It's really good. So do you go to the gym or what's a day in your life? Take me through Yuri's life for a day work um usually in the morning i like to start with exercise because it just also feels good you're and, a gym buff <laughs> and nobody's at the gym in the morning which is great because uh, if you want to go in the evening here it's just going to be so many people there so when i take care of the health then uh go into the work mode work from anywhere like nine to t- start about nine to ten finish Sometimes even midnight, depends. Nine to ten, so it's not escaping nine to five anymore. <laughs> so when you when you turn to a digital nomad, it's you've commented on one of my posts and you said it's not escaping nine to five. It's nine to nine, right? Yeah, in many ways, nine to five feels like the easy way, but it's, your day is gonna get a lot longer sometimes. Well, that's true, because you know when you work for yourself or when you work as a freelance. You have your own time and you can work at many hours as you can. You can take time off as much as you want, but that's really not healthy for the client or for the company or for your business. And sometimes I just find it hard to be productive. I just really find it hard to be productive. It is true. Yeah, sometimes I'm struggling as well. And speaking of that, I always ask my guests this question. Do you think that the people who work remotely is more way more happier than people who sits in an office and waiting for 5 p.m. to ding? Do you think do you feel like we're happier people? I don't think that's necessarily true because you can have if you have a really fulfilling job, mm-hmm. then you can be a happy camper. I think it's it's not really about how you do like mm-hmm. if you have a job or if you do something on the side, but it's about a like it's about a fulfillment to the like the mission. If you're doing something that you love doing, even though if it's a job, I think it's perfectly fine. Yeah, and, and if you have good friends, you yeah. know, in the company, some people stay in a company. Sometimes it's mostly because of the people of how they find their own. What do you call this? Their own batch of people that they. You know, they can talk about their lives. Also, that's a sad t- thing being a digital nomad or working remotely or working for yourself is you don't get that much friends because it's hard to make friends. I totally agree. And I really, like, sometimes I envy the people who are working in the office because they can have their teams. But And the gossips. <laughs> not really the gossips, but I would like to have a team as well. So that's what I'm working towards this year because I don't really like working alone as much. But Mm -hmm. I love working with different people who can challenge me, who can push me forward. Wow, I love that. Who can challenge me and who can push me forward. Okay, enough of the digital talk. What is the coolest place or the most fun thing that you've done in the past year? Can you recall something? Sure. So this brings us back to Singapore. Ooh, your favorite place. Yeah. Do you know Tony Robbins? Yes. So I went to one of his seminars last year, and it was exactly a year ago, actually. He's the most hyper person that I've ever seen on yeah. TV. Yeah, he's pretty good. So I went to, what's it called? The Unleash the Power mindset. Within. Unleash uh, the Power Within. Okay. It's a four-day <laughs> seminar in Singapore, and it was just crazy. How was, how was, this exp- how was the experience? Uh, it, was, uh, it was just pretty awesome. So I, I've been lis- I've been listening to him for about six years before 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 seeing him so i have listened to almost everything mm-hmm. but still just being there with thirteen thousand people it was just an incredible experience and also the days were just super long you, you woke up at 6 a.m uh you wouldn't have to get to the expo 
which the, the, the program started about at about nine mm -hmm. and finished past midnight sometimes. Does he stay there from Four nine days, to yeah. midnight? So it was pretty much the full, full day. We had zero free time. Oh, so I thought that he's just going to show up at like lunchtime and then come Oh, up. no. So he's just there for It's like immersion, the yeah. It's like it's oh a crazy God. day. And there, there's almost no breaks. Like the first day, there were no breaks. You just have to go out on your own time. What's your learning? What was your learning from the whole experience with Tony Robbins? Oh, there are so many takeaways from there because uh, it talks about quite a different things. Uh, what I liked, uh, there was a fire walk there. It was on the first day. You actually got to work, walk on fire. He on always a call. does that. Yeah, he it did was it pretty to cool. Oprah. Yeah, I, I saw the video, yeah. Oh my God. Was, did, did you do it? Yeah. But at the beginning, they make it look. They made it look really scary. But it actually, wasn't. It was fine. It was wasn't that long, and you can just do it. But did you, did you burn your feet? No. no. Oh. My friend got a little blister, but. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, oh! I I thought that he only does that to like Hawaii or. No, it's part of every call. It's part of everything. every program. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I've heard about that too. Was it expensive? Generally, his courses are or his programs, but. I don't know how we managed to do this, but we just got a crazy deal, which wasn't expensive at all. For like, for like Tony's standards, it was cheap, I would say. Because I, I've heard a lot of stories. I've seen his thing on Netflix, which is called I'm Not Your Guru. Yeah, and it's a different I've, program. Yeah, and I've, oh, it's a different program from this? Oh, it was recorded on a date, to des a date with Destiny, so, which oh, is a okay. six or five day program. Yeah, and I've heard that a lot of people like sold their houses just to go there and shift their mindset or... You know, hoping that they could get help from Tony Robbins and it worked for them. I like his uh, I like his daily rituals, which he jumped into an ice of pool or a pool of ice every morning. And that's, I, I can't do that. I'm such a night person or such a mid-afternoon person. How about you? I'm a morning person. And actually on YouTube, he has a couple of videos where he does what he calls priming. So... Uh, I try to get into a habit of doing it every morning when you wake mm -hmm. up. It's like a 14-minute priming. You just go through a couple of different things. Mm -hmm. And it just prepares you for the day. Like, mm -hmm. it puts your focus into the right place. And you're going to have so much What's better day. What's the name of that? Priming. Is it free? Yeah, it's just a YouTube video you can watch. Oh, wow. I can send you a link afterwards. Sure. You can also give that to me so that the listeners can go to that Absolutely, link. Absolutely, yeah. Also, speaking of a link, I did a test with... Tony Robbins' team about the DISC personality, D-I-S-C. Um, it tells you, like, it's a series of questions mm -hmm. about knowing your personality. And damn, it's well straight. Like, it really gets, sometimes I'm confused of what kind of person I am. And it really gets to the point that, oh, I, I am a very compassionate person it says there that you're compassionate, that you have to tweak this to for you to be on a management level or, or think like a manager or think like an entrepreneur. And it's just a good test for you to take just to analyze your personality so that you could do well in your career or, or, or whatever path that you're taking. That's also a good test. I'll send it to you. Great, we'll thank you. We'll switch links. <laughs> and... Uh, You've never actually worked for a nine to five job, right? No, I did briefly for a year and a half in Thailand. It was my first full time job here. What made you say that I won't ever go back to a nine to five job anymore? I'm not sure if I made a resolution, but I just feel like I couldn't stay there anymore because I had no freedom. Like the first year, I couldn't even take any holidays, mm -hmm. which is a problem because I like to actually visit my family. Mm hmm. And speaking of your family, your mom's going to visit you, right? Absolutely, yeah. Wow. Are you excited? Yes. In four weeks. Oh, my She's God. We would miss her because we're going to be in the Philippines that time. I want to meet your mom. Is she vegetarian too? Not really, but I, I don't think she eats too much meat these days. When did you... You're, you're plant-based, right? When did you switch? After I got to Thailand. Mm, that's weird because Thailand, you find any meat that you can. And that's, that's also the time that you switched. Yeah, because coincidentally, I was just listening to uh, Tony Robbins' program. It was about, uh, I'm not sure what the name is, healthy living or something like that. And uh, there he talked about the nutrition, health, mm -hmm. and I just clicked and just made sense to me. And I haven't looked back. 
So you've met Tony Robbins and you've met a lot of inspiring and amazing people from the seminars that you've attended. What were your top learnings from all of it as a digital marketer? Wow, I don't, I'm not sure if I can just point out one single thing. There have been so many things. Just maybe in, in life in general, what you, what, what, what's the impact of going through seminars? Because, you know, digital marketing is not only about going to the seminars or the courses, okay. but I also... I know now. Yeah. So one thing, probably one the most important thing is that I realized that I can do so much better than I'm doing right now. And it's just mostly your your mind, your psychology that's holding you back. Because uh, how did I say that? Is it like 20% the actual work and 80%, yeah, 80, 80% 20, yeah. perspiration or something like that? And that's just so true. Because I feel like the, the mind is your biggest limit. It can be the break mm -hmm. on the way to success. But if you know how to work with it, like you can do so many great things. Wow. That's that's really true. It's just all in the mind, right? Absolutely, yeah. For a lot of digital marketers who's working or a lot of people working online who works uh, via Upwork, via Fiverr, or via these website who is also freelancers and who has clients all over the world, they paid they get paid like very less amount of money in that type of like thing that they're doing. What can you um, advise them if they're selling their, themselves short? I know it's, it's very general, but okay, I've never really had to be a part of those platforms, Fiverr or Upwork. Mm -hmm. I know what they do, but as a, now as an agency owner, I know it's better to actually be hiring people there than working there yourself because you, you're going to have to shorten of the stick every time you work there because you have to compete with other people from everywhere in the world. So if you're a designer in the UK, Mm -hmm. You're competing with a designer in India and they can always, you know, have, have a better price than you. So it's a never ending battle. Mm -hmm. And in this regard, I think what really would pay off mm -hmm. is to learn how to sell yourself. You, yeah. Learn self-marketing, self whatever your profession is. You can be a designer, you can be a, I don't know, singer, whatever. Mm -hmm. But just learn how to market yourself and sell yourself because you can always get a much better deal. Uh, if, you, if you get it directly with the, the client, then if you go through some platform. Yeah, so now I'm working with one client and that's also one of the battle th battles that I have in my head that, you know what, I realize that I can do more and I realize that, yeah, it's just the way that I think. I And Drew always told me that you're really good at this, but you don't, you don't realize it and you don't know the value that you're giving. So sometimes you sell yourself short. Sometimes you are okay to just get paid with whatever amount that they told you, but you don't realize that you're giving them the whole frame, not only the picture. So now that you're, you have your own company, and I'm really excited about that, and you said that you're looking to hire this year, yeah. people from like online workers as well. Is that right? No, actually, uh, I have to... You want an actual person. Yeah, you, you kind of have to because mm -hmm. Thai laws. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Uh, so so uh, if you're a foreigner in a company in Thailand, you need to have four Thai people on board. So for every foreigner. So which puts some... Oh. Uh, it's good for motivation on one hand. Mm -hmm. but also like puts con constraints on how you do business. You kind of have to go with the flow here. Oh, okay. Is it hard to build a company in Thailand? I don't think it's too hard. Like mm -hmm. at the beginning, if you haven't started, it just looks really terrifying because mm -hmm. there are so many things that, you know, so many rules. So many rules that you can yeah. read between the But lines. actually, it's, it's not so hard once you get going, but it can be pain in the ass sometimes dealing with the immigration, the mm -hmm. laws. Uh, are you excited about hiring new people? Absolutely, yeah. Because like I said, I don't want to work by Alone. myself. <laughs> yeah, so much better if you if you work with someone actually smarter who, mm -hmm. who can outsmart you. What are the characteristics that you want for a person either who works remotely or someone who wants to be in this digital marketing space? What are the types and characteristics of people or personalities that you want to be in board you want do you want it to be fun oh the people i want to work with yeah people that you want to hire 
Okay, so the people I want to work with, actually, ideally, I would want to have similar values with them or similar mm -hmm. attitudes, and then uh, skills second. Mm -hmm. I know that's how they say that, but I have seen it in other companies before. Like sometimes, you know, you have good people that have good skills, but they're just can be not really fun to be around with or just you're mismatched so you can't be around mm -hmm. them so i would like to uh get aboard people who have like similar mindset similar attitude mm -hmm. work and then we can figure out the skills that's true because you always want to hire people who can brainstorm with you who can who also think big to grow your company are you afraid of a person that you'll be hiring who is smarter than you who could outsmart you you said earlier that you want a person who's smarter than you but other people they they're more of like bossy type of people like they're scared of they're scared of hiring someone who could either replace them in the future what can what's your comment about that I hope I get a replace in the future because I don't want to work there forever. You want to <laughs> retire. <laughs> yeah, it's like ideally I just want to create a system that's going to work without me. Like I don't really, if I can choose, I don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's more like not really just building a company, but it's, it's more like a building a system for you. So the, the way I actually think about it is that I think about how I want to have my life and then just try to design mm -hmm. everything around, around it. Around it. Yeah. Yeah. What keeps you motivated? Okay. I feel like... Coffee. Um, <laughs> that helps sometimes. <laughs> but I feel like I have to replenish my motivation quite often. Especially since I got to Thailand. When I lived in, in Europe, I was among other people. I feel like it was much easier to actually to stay on top because you had you can always you know brush against other people, like different ideas. And also when you go through school, you, you have... As, uh, like a pre-made path you just go you know you just take it but here there is so many things you can do no one's pushing you mm -hmm. so i feel like i have to replenish my motivation quite often and usually like if i do the morning priming then my day is going to be like, so much better it's, it's going to be like awesome do you have a mentor no but funny that you said that uh, i want to find one this year for business okay you can hire me <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so is it important to have a mentor for the business that you are building or just in life in general? I would say it's it's good to have a mentor for almost any area of life. If you want to be in good shape, good health, just get a coach or like a health mentor. So this can apply to, to really to, to every area of life. Why is it important? Because if you're just by yourself... Like you said, you're probably going to set yourself short. Yes. Because you just don't think as much about you maybe as you should. Or you yes. just don't really know your capacity. You don't realize your capacity yeah. and what you can offer. But if someone raises the bar above you, then mm -hmm. you're going to fill that space somehow. You'll just find a way. But if you know no one's pushing, you're not going to do much. You're absolutely right. So I feel like if you're just by yourself, you're going to hit your natural limit. And mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to push past that limit. And... A lot of people are now wanting to be or very curious to be in this whole digital marketing space. What advice can you give to all those aspiring people who's working now in an office and dreaming of this life that we have as people who works in a co-working space and cafes at your home or just anywhere? What advice can you give? You know that we all know that this is not always bed of roses. So you got to punch it right in the gut. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if I can speak so much from experience, uh, but it's more like a theory. But I would say that uh, specialize in something. Just don't be a jack of all trades, but just be a master of one. It's like mm -hmm. a big, a really tight area. It's like maybe one or two at most or three. I don't know. And just, just be really as good as you can. Because especially in digital marketing is such a broad scheme, such a broad thing, right? Sometimes you don't even know what it is, and that's, that's a, I feel like that many people are really confused by this. Like when you say you're a marketer, like what yeah, do you actually like what do? What kind of marketer? Well, you know? Well, yeah. What's that? Yeah. So if someone tells me they're a marketer, I was like, well, okay. So what do you actually do? You roll do? your eyes yeah. with an eye roll. <laughs> <laughs> so you you need to 
find what you're good at. Yeah. And hone your skills. Yeah. If you if you want to be a freelancer, it's really important. If you want to be a business owner, not so much because as a business owner, you need to have a much broader scope. What's the scariest part of now that you're building a company? Do you get scared or are you excited? Both. <laughs> it's scary and exciting at the same yeah, time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like it took me a while to just uh, to change the mindset to, mm-hmm. to where I'm now. And yeah, at the beginning, I was definitely scared. Like, oh, what if I can actually make it or find mm-hmm. a client or something like that? But now, okay, I'm still in the making, so I haven't I haven't made it yet. But I feel like I'm on a good path now. Wow, it took you a long time as well. Yeah, it's like more more than a year actually. Yeah, when we when we met you, you have mentioned that you already have this company, but it's always like in the back of a picture, right? Yeah. And now you're pushing it forward. What made you decide to? I'll do it this year. Was it the New Year's resolution? Okay. <laughs> It's funny that we spoke about a mentor. So actually, I have a business partner in Slovakia, and uh, he's been really supportive in this regard. So actually, I'm not sure if I actually would have made it without him, because mm. he's really big support. Uh, so we kind of do it together. So it's, it's a commitment. It's a commitment. Yeah. <laughs> You're not having a girlfriend right now because you have this commitment for Bold. <laughs> what can we expect in Bold Digital and Yuri? Okay, so if you if you live in Bangkok, uh, you can expect to hopefully see me around because this year I would like to branch out into speaking a little bit more. Wow, I would like this to share some start. share some marketing knowledge. At the moment, we're setting up a marketing block where we're gonna talk about how to solve some various business problems with digital marketing. Mm-hmm. For example, how to sell your how to sell your services online, how to get leads, um, and a few other topics. So mm-hmm. we're gonna touch on that. In the blog at first, and then I want to repurpose the content for uh, some speaking engagements. Wow. So it's one thing. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna help a lot of people to be on the right path to choose because there's a lot of branches of digital marketing. So at least you could help them focus on, oh, yeah, this is what you're good at. So is that what you're doing? Like you're gonna pinpoint to them and help them find their niche. No, it's actually, up? this is for businesses. We're in B2B business, so oh, it's going to okay. be for business owners. It's for business owners. Yeah. That's amazing. Even for free- freelancers, you can consider yourself as a small business, so it can, yeah. it can benefit to you as well. Oh, we'll talk yeah. about that later. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what are the perks of your lifestyle that you enjoy now? It's something I actually haven't really realized for the last four years or, or so that I've been here. That actually I'm really location independent. I can just, with uh, the side work that I have, I can literally go to any place in the world, like as long as I have enough money. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's really great. Something I haven't really realized much. But now, so having this company is actually probably going to take it away a little bit because the company is based here. When I have a team, I'm going to be bound to I'm Bangkok. Out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I have to make it work. Uh, so that I can actually go travel, so like maybe meet different clients in mm-hmm. different countries or something like that. Yeah, you gotta sacrifice a little. If yeah. you're building something, you gotta focus all your energy into it until it functions as its own thing, or your team can run it so that you can have your so little. I feel like vacation. my advantage is gonna disappear. What? Or the, my advantage of being <laughs> being so free or location independent, it's yeah. gonna like it's almost disappear. It's okay, but yeah. it's the, for the benefit of what you're doing. Last question: Where do you think this whole remote revolution is going? Wow, it's really hard to say because I feel like I I uh, was became a part of it just without actually knowing it. I just became a digital nomad without realizing it. And uh, now, seeing how it works in Bangkok, th- there, there are so many co-working spaces here. I feel like every day there is a new co-working space. Discover it somewhere, somewhere new. More and more people won't, won't want to work for a company anymore. I feel like uh, now with this online thing, there'll be so many ways actually how you can make income. Mm-hmm. There's uh, so many paths. I'm actually sometimes surprised. So I feel like more people will discover these and... Uh, companies might actually have a hard time perhaps finding people i know i'm scared of that too but also a lot of companies now are flexible of allowing their people to work remotely or to work from home 
Because like in the Philippines, they just approved, uh, I think it's a bill that is for allowing employees to work remotely, but getting the same benefits to ease the traffic just because of the traffic. Mm. So I think that would also be, that would also happen to like places like Bangkok. Yeah, that's actually a little bit dangerous though, I think, because productivity at home is, uh, that's a dangerous concept. I know. Like it's really hard to be productive at home. Yeah, that's always my battle every single day. So if I work with someone and they want to work from home, I might be a little bit skeptical. Like, unless I know what they're like, what their discipline is, Mm -hmm. I would be actually afraid to do that at the beginning because like you're not going to work as hard. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I, it's, it's hard to find a focus or like a tunnel focus when you're working at home because like for me as a girl, I want to do the dishes. I want to do this while you're working. You want to do this. You want to clean the house. So there's really no focus compared to working in an office. You're just sitting there and you need to focus on your job. And after you're done, you're done. You can do whatever you want. But that's, again, that's, it's up to you on how you're going to organize your life in some in some ways and how to focus what is the principle that you go by okay i hope i remember this correctly so when i was i had a summer internship in the usa before while i was oh yeah studying university in in czech republic and our organization we had this motto let me just maybe think about it first (laughs) he's writing it down guys it was three sentences. I was oh yeah, I was always improve, mm-hmm. have fun, and do the right thing. I love that. Always improve, have fun, and always do the right thing. Yeah. Do you believe in flurnings? Flurnings meaning failures and learnings. Oh, absolutely. Combined? Yeah. yeah. There's always a lot of flurnings, especially when you're building a company. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm really inspired right now for now I I completely understood what you do and I'm really excited for where you're heading, where your company is heading and I can't wait to see you rocking this digital marketing industry and to help more people by speaking engagements. Thank you very much. And now it's time for the rapid fire questions. Yay. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. So you don't think of the answer, just fire it right away. Ready? Coffee or tea? Coffee. Work at home or working at space? Space. Mac or Windows? Mac. Friday night Netflix or at a bar? Bar. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you think twice about that? I don't watch Netflix actually. Okay. Fair enough. Wine or beer? Beer. Early bird or night owl? Bird. <laughs> Early bird. <laughs> <laughs> Best place to work is a digital nomad, Asia or Europe? Uh, Asia. Best productivity app? Notion. Notion. I'll write it down. Lifting or yoga? Lifting. Instagram or Facebook? Instagram. Headphones or AirPods? AirPods. Yay! <laughs> That's good. Thank you very much, Yuri, for your time today. And oh, My pleasure. I'm really happy Thanks that you're here. here. You can come by again once your company is blowing up. With I can't staff. wait for that. With the staff? All right. Bring all your staff in. <laughs> <laughs> and also, for all the people who want to check out the blog post, because I know it's going to help them a lot, what is the link if you can enunciate it? Okay, so I have a personal blog which is now going to go through a transformation. Uh, and it's my name. It's J U R A J M I C K A dot com. It's like my name is really hard to pronounce. That's J U R A J M I C K A dot com. Yeah, at the moment, uh, it's a bit of mixed stories, but I want to re- uh, want to make it more of a like a unified place, so so it can actually resonate with what I do. Dig- That's good. Professionally. Wow, I can't wait to read all the articles that you're gonna post because I know it's also gonna help me a lot with what I do. Thank you. Thank you too. Hello again, podcast listeners. Join me every weekend. And if you haven't yet, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. You can subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. 
Join me again next week for another inspiring journey in helping you escaping 9 to 5. Oh.